Hi guys, I just wanted to walk you through uh, the Tesla software release version 7.0 uh, featuring Autopilot. I know online there is, uh, at least from the, from the Tesla online website and, and other sources, I have not found uh, a PDF version of this or a printed version, so I thought I'll go through it, uh, try to be fairly quick here, and uh, just walk you through it in case you're a you're not actually a Tesla owner and you don't have this, so um, I'll, uh, I probably won't read it all word for word, but word for word, but I'll I'll go through it as best I can here. So just it starts off with uh, with this release, we're introducing a significant advancement in autopilot functionality, with auto steer, auto lane change, auto park, and side collision warning. We've designed these new autopilot features to give you more confidence behind the wheel increase your safety on the road and make highway driving more enjoyable. Similar to autopilot function in airplanes, you need to maintain control and responsibility of your vehicle while enjoying the convenience of autopilot in Model S. This release also features the first significant visual refresh to the look and feel of the displays since the launch of Model S. The instrument panel is more driver focused and includes additional apps to help you monitor your driving. There are also additional improvements to the Model S driving experience, such as vehicle hold. So uh, it highlights it here, a new modern look, new and redesigned instrument panel, status bar changes, auto steer, auto lane change, auto park, traffic wear, cruise control improvements, side collision warning, vehicle hold, climate control improvements, and additional improvements. So uh, first section, a new modern look. Uh, it's a driver-focused instrument panel. As you can see here, we have an analog clock in this example. Uh, if you have an autopilot car, you'll see a visual representation of the road and the car. Now I'll just read that one section to you. The new instrument panel design features a real-time visualization of the road as detected by the car sensor systems, providing information about your vehicle's surroundings as well as the context for how Model S will behave when autopilot features are engaged. Uh, so next couple things here. New and redesigned instrument panel app. So there's the car status app, which is new, and that's showing you the tire pressures. Now in this case it's, uh, it's metric, so it's in bar instead of PSI. Um, so it says monitor, tire pressure, seatbelt warnings, and door status with the new car status app. Even when you're not viewing this app, it will appear in the instrument panel to notify you when there are any important warnings. And then the clock app, and that's, as far as I can tell, it's the only way you can get the temperature uh, readout onto the instrument cluster. Personally, I find the analog clock uh, kind of useless. I, I kind of preferred the digital clock with the, the date on it from the old interface, but that's gone. So then we have uh, the Trips app, um, and that that is definitely different. Um, I actually like having this one up. I'm, I'm not totally used to this one yet, but this is where it shows your your total kilometers, so your, your vehicle's odometer, which, I mean, I, I kind of thought it should be there at all times, but it's it's in this app and then there's the energy app and if you have a, a non-autopilot car yours will be different um, the autopilot cars or pardon me the non-autopilot cars actually still have kind of the the energy meter there uh, the circular part um, so this is just a little different way of, of presenting that information that was there before so uh, status bar changes, you can now tap the little icon for lock and unlock to actually lock and unlock the car. Um, the you used to have a battery indicator right here. Um, it's kind of a battery meter similar to, a, you know, what a cell phone, smartphone would have. And now it's a little lightning bolt. And if you're actually charging, it turns green. If it's scheduled, you see a little clock there. So it's just a slightly different version of it. Um, the rest is pretty much the same. 
Um, so new autopilot features. Here's auto steer, which is a beta. Um, it's it's still really cool, but uh, I'll I'll read part of this out here. Auto steer makes highway driving easier by keeping you in your current lane even as the road curves. It also engages traffic or cruise control to maintain speed while respecting a safe following distance to the car in front of you. Auto steer works well on highways when there are clear lane markings or a car directly ahead to follow. It does not function reliably when a road has very sharp turns or when lane markings are absent, faded or ambiguous. Auto steer performance will also deteriorate in rainy, snowy or foggy conditions. While auto steer facilitates basic highway driving, it is vital that you pay attention to your driving environment so you can take over if needed. Note, auto steer is a hands-on feature. You must keep your hands on the steering wheel at all times. And that's... Technically, you don't have to have your hands on the wheel, but that's kind of a, I think, kind of a legal, a legal thing, like they, they recommend it kind of thing. It's not like some systems where you really do have to have your hands on the wheel. Uh, there are times where you can keep your hands right close by and be paying very good attention. So uh, the indicator here on the left uh, shows you the speed that your, that your cruise is set to. The big number in the middle is always there. That's your current speed. And then if auto steer is available, uh, you'll, you'll have the gray or blue steering wheel icon. Uh, your speed uh, limit sign, as detected, gets put up here. Your car is always here in the, the bottom center. And then if there is a vehicle in front of you, it, it shows up there in that display. So before you enable, uh, before you can use auto steer, you need to turn it on in the uh, in the settings of the car. There's also the auto lane change right beside it there. Um, basically, to, to initiate auto steer, you pull the cruise control stock twice in quick succession towards you. And there's a chime to indicate that. And you must be going at least 30 kilometers per hour to engage auto steer. Or uh, if there's a vehicle in front of you, you can do it at any speed. So here's a representation of auto steer is active, or pardon me, available but not active. So you can see the icon's gray. And then uh, when auto steer is active, that icon turns blue. And actually the lines turn blue also. To indicate which lines are detected and of course the speed things blue also. So if auto steer is steering based off a vehicle in front of you that vehicle shows up blue and the lines are are uh, not highlighted. Uh, so if Model S is receiving reduced centered sensor data you'll see that message hold steering wheel. And then I've seen this message a couple times uh, auto steer, uh, it says take over immediately and it beeps and it's red and and uh, that means it's time for you to take over. Auto, auto steer is not 100% sure on what's going on. So uh, cancel auto steer, you can take over the steering which is very easy. Press the brake pedal and push the cruise stock away from you. And you know if I'm going too fast or there's something here you want to read in more detail just pause the video and and read that section and then resume like I say I don't want to you know read everything word for word but uh, just in case you, you don't have a test or you don't have autopilot this this might be helpful for you to read through oh and you can't go too terribly fast uh, with auto steer auto steer does not activate above 150 kilometers per hour Actually, it doesn't say that it disables at 150, it just says you can't activate it, so I'm guessing if you activate it at 150 and you go faster, you can probably get away with that. Uh, so auto lane change, as I mentioned, there's an option in the control panel to turn that on. And uh, let's see here, so if it detects the lanes, you'll see the blue lanes here, left and right. Um, dashed line becomes solid. Oh, I see. It turns dashed when, when you're actually making the change, and then it goes solid again when you're done. So you either have to hold down the hold the, the turn signal part way, not all the way, hold it while it makes that lane change, or you can just turn the signal all the way right or left, 
to make the change and then you'll have to manually disengage the turn signal. So you must engage the turn signal separately for each lane change that's desired. Auto lane change is off by default. Okay, auto park. Uh, Model S can now parallel park for you. To start auto park, drive ahead of the available spot until you see the P on the instrument panel. Uh, which is shown right here. It's kind of kind of a faded P. But uh, if you're driving slowly and you're looking for that, you'll, you'll see it. Uh, so once you see that P, shift into reverse. The auto park guide will appear on the touch screen along with the rear camera display. Once activated, auto park will begin to park itself by controlling steering and vehicle speed. You can cancel auto park by taking over steering, shifting, or pressing the cancel button on the touch screen. You can pause auto park by pressing the brake pedal. Um, I did have a chance to try, try this out a few times today, and it's really cool. Um, there's actually kind of a start button that shows up there when when it's available to, to use. It's really cool. If you get the chance, try out Auto Park. Uh, I'm kind of anticipating, uh, hopefully at some point it'll be able to um, back you into a spot or pull you into a spot in like, you know, a shopping mall or shopping center kind of thing, like, you know, a traditional parking lot. That'd be kind of a kind of a nice addition. Uh, traffic aware cruise control improvements. Uh, Model S will approach stationary vehicles more smoothly and react earlier when vehicles enter and exit your lane, and I can tell you that is true. Traffic aware cruise control will adjust vehicle speed approximately when entering and exiting tight turns at higher speeds. Uh, not sure offhand. Overtake acceleration is now smarter and will consider vehicles in the designation destination lane before initiating. It is now enabled by default and there's no longer a setting to disable it. Um, I didn't really use that much before. You now no longer need to press the button at the end of the cruise stock to enable TACC. Simply engage cruise by tapping the cruise stock up and down or pulling the cruise stock. Pressing the button when TACC is engaged puts the feature into standby mode. Um, side collision warning. Uh, blind spot warning has been upgraded to side collision warning. Um, so it still uses the same sensors. It looks different on the screen. You'll see yellow and gray and red and different things in here. I'm not sure if it really works much differently. But uh, it's a little, a little different in how it shows up. Uh, this is nice. Vehicle Hold. Vehicle Hold is an improved version of Hill Start Assist that holds a vehicle for an extended period of time on all grades, including flat roads. So this is really cool. So if you pull up to a red light or something, you put your foot on the brake, and you just... I don't even know if you have to push it down a little more. Uh, let's just read it. Uh, to engage Vehicle Hold, press the brake pedal while at a standstill. When it's engaged, a gray icon will appear in the right corner of the instrument panel. To disable it, press the accelerator pedal, or press and release the brake pedal. Uh, this is actually really cool because if you're sitting at a red light for a while, maybe, or maybe there's a you stop for a train or something, that's great. You don't have to put the vehicle in the park; it'll just hold it. Uh, climate control improvements. Uh, the performance of the climate control system has been significantly improved. The system will now reach your desired temperature more quickly while using less energy. Uh, I know I've, I've heard reports that uh, the air conditioning does does operate better and um, you know in the past you might have to turn the temperature down uh, a little more than you normally do to get it to cool. Um, I really haven't had a chance to to use this much. I did try to, uh, turning the heat on today and I noticed it, it maybe it's just my imagination but it seemed to take just a little bit longer to get hot like it, it still got hot it just it seemed to take longer to kind of ramp up to the to that heat level uh, so additional improvements smooth constant torque near zero speed when you shift to drive there will be a smooth transition from rolling backwards to forwards as you accelerate through zero speed and then improved dry drive line feel near zero speed you'll experience smoother tighter vehicle response when pressing the accelerator pedal at speeds below five kilometers per hour well, that, uh, that wraps up uh, the, the release notes for version 7.0 that we, we can't get in a PDF yet. 
Um, took a little longer than I thought. We're right at about 15 minutes now. Hope you stuck with it. Um, if you have any questions or you want me to go through anything else here in detail, uh, be sure to let me know in the comments below. As always, um, if you like this video, um, like it, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching.